Good afternoon, all participants. On behalf of IRIFAM, Indian Railway Institute of Financial Management, Sukhindrabad, extend warm welcome to each one of you for today's webinar on operating ratio. And to take up this session, we have CM Nageshwar Rao, Senior Instructor, IRIFAM. Welcome, and it's over to you to come in the session, please. Uh, thank you, Benhar. Thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, participants. Good afternoon, sir. Today we'll discuss this operating ratio as well as uh, some other parameters also we'll discuss. So today these are the topics uh, we have to cover uh, in the current session. That is the uh, different parameters in the Indian language including operating ratio. Uh, hope I am audible and visible. Please confirm. Audible, audible, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. And uh, how the calculation of operating ratio and the calculation of net revenue bar net receipts or surplus and uh, or practical examples of the previous years and some examples and uh, what is performance efficiency index and uh, what are the differences between operating ratio and performance efficiency index? Uh, these are the things we have to cover. These are all important from examination point of view also. Now let me start. What is ratio? So before uh, going into this operating ratio, now we'll check what is ratio and what is ratio analysis. A ratio is a relationship expressed in mathematical terms between two figures between two figures. In the operation ratio, if we check it is a gross earnings and gross uh, working expenses. So it is a relationship expressed in the mathematical terms between two figures having a cause and effect relationship. Having cause and effect relationship means either of the figure is uh, changed, the, it is impact on the uh, ratio. Or connected in some way or other is called ratio. So also one more definition is an expression of the quantitative relationship that exists between two numbers is called ratio. Okay. Now if you go through this para 510 of the Indian Railways Administration and Finance Code, this is the very small code, you can uh, uh, browse in the Google. Yeah. The, there it is a, uh, mentioned what are the ratios or parameters followed in the Indian Railways. We will go by one by one. Yeah. Operating ratio, it is a percentage of gross working expenses to gross earnings. That means it should be as low as possible. It should be as low as possible. So this is operating ratio. The second ratio is the percentage of net receipts or net revenue to capital at charge and investments from capital fund. Investments from capital fund. However, this parameter has lost its relevance. Why? Because now capital at charge is seized with effect from 2017 and 18 due to merger of railway budget with the general budget. However, it is still exists in the code book, but now it is not required. If you have a, a examination question after 2017 and 18 uh, figures, this is now uh, has no relevance. Okay. Suppose if it is there, it should be as high as possible. Because it is equivalent to the rate of return in the commercial organization. In the commercial organization, we used to call rate of return, rate of or ROC, return, uh, uh, return on capital employed. That means suppose 100 rupees we are invested. So we got profit is 7 rupees. So ROC is called 7%. That means uh, uh, return on capital employed. Return is 7 rupees, capital employed is 100 rupees, so it is 7 percent. So now it is not required after 2017 and 18. And similarly, another ratio also is not required that is a percentage of surplus to capital charge and investment from capital fund. The difference between uh, net receipts and surplus is nothing but dividends paid. Okay. So this parameter also has lost its significance because the capital charge is seized. Okay. 
If it is not there, uh, uh, otherwise it is uh, high, as high as all. It is also like a rate of return. Okay. Now we go next parameter. This is the current assets to current liabilities. What is the uh, relationship between current assets and current liabilities? Here it is a uh, two kinds of parameters in values. One is uh, uh, that is uh, store suspense side, another is WMS side. So store suspense side, it is the stores in stock in terms of months consumption. That means what is available stores in respect of a comparison to average monthly consumption. I have taken an example. Here closing balance of the stock on 30th June because it is calculated uh, month wise. So for 30th June, the closing stock, this is 1000 members. Whereas monthly consumption, that is average monthly consumption is 500 members. That means as of, that, as of 30th June, we have two months consumption is stock is available in the railways. That is 1000 divided by 500 is equal to two months consumption is kept as stock balance. That means this figure it should be as low as possible because the inventory attracts this capital, locking of capital. So it should be as low as possible, but uh, should not be less than one month consumption because it affects the operations under the uh, manufacturing and other operations of the railway. So it should be ideal, it should not be more or it should not be less. Okay. And another parameter on the current assets or current liabilities is the works in progress as a percentage of value in the workshop outturn. I think all of you know <coughs> that is the WMS closing balance. WMS closing balance. Yeah, here the formula is closing balance divided by total credits into 100. Multiplied by 100. Suppose here example I have taken. Uh, closing balance is 60 members, whereas total credits 2000 multiplied by 100 is equal to 3%. So this is also as low as possible. This, is a, this should be as low as possible. The ideal percentage for repair workshops it is 3%, whereas ideal percentage of WMS for manufacturing side, manufacturing side it is 6%. That is ideal. Now go for another parameter. This is the stores inventory. This is also store suspense side. Stores inventory as a percentage of total issue of stores. Shortly, it is a popular word, TOR, turnover ratio. But it is calculated with the fuel and without fuel because fuel occupies major portion of the inventory. So by taking, including the fuel, we are calculating one turnover ratio. And by excluding the fuel, that means without fuel, other than fuel items, we have to calculate another turnover ratio in driving slot. So what is the formula turnover ratio? Stores in stock as of 31st March of the financial year, that is the last day, what is the closing stock? Divided by total issues during the year. During the year means April 1st to 31st March. Total issues during the 12 months multiplied by 100 is equal to turnover ratio. It is also as low as possible. It is also as low as possible. What is the example? Here I have taken this stores in stock on 31st March 400. A total issues during the year, that means 12 months issues, it is 2000 multiplied by 100, it is a 20 percent. The turnover ratio for this example is. 20%. And another parameter, see all the above parameters are on expenditure side. Are on expenditure side. Except this is the earning side. This last parameter, this is the earning side. Unrealized earnings at the year end in terms of number of days and earnings. In terms of number of days and earnings, this parameter. Here, to understand uh, easily, I have taken an example this thing. Here, the formula is profit suspense, that is the unrealized earnings on 31st March, divided 
by earnings per day earnings per day so how we will arrive earnings per day the total yearly earnings divided by 365 days is called earnings per day so this is the formula simple profit expense divided by earnings per day okay here i have taken an example profit expense on 31st march it is 200 suppose total earnings in a financial year is at 3650 so what is the earnings per day 3650 divided by 365 is equal to okay. So here, if you take this above example, this uh, profit suspense is 200 and what is earnings per day? 10 rupees. Earnings per day? 10 rupees. That means 200 divided by 10 is equal to 20 days. That means it reflects the average uh, time for collection of this debtors or uh, unrealized earnings, it took 20 days. On an average, how many days it will uh, take to collect the, uh, realize the earnings is 20 days. So, it should be as low as possible. Suppose if it is the more number of days, it is the more time to realize the, our unrealized earnings. If it is the less, we will recover as quickly as possible. So this is also important, this parameter on earning side or profit side. Now we go into this operating ratio. This is the main important. Here, what is codal provisions for operating ratio is para 308 and 434 of the Indian Railways Financial Finance Code. If you, if you check Indian Railway Finance Code, volume 1, para 308 and para 434. Okay. It is regarded as the one of the most important financial statistics or ratios and has frequently been used as an index of the operating efficiency of the railways. Now, oh. Please silent. So what is the definition of operating ratio? Definition of operating ratio is Percentage of gross working expenses to gross earnings of any accounting year is called operating ratio. Nowadays, the railway board use the term total working expenses instead of gross working expenses. But as per the code, it is a gross working expenses. Both are same. Don't confuse. Nowadays, the railway board use the word total working expenses instead of gross working expenses. That means, in general, the operating ratio is the number of rupees spent to earn every 100 rupees. That means to earn every 100 rupees, how many rupees has to be spent? That is simple. That means if operating ratio is less than 100, it is the organization is in the profit. Because the uh, Reducing the gross working expenses is nothing but it is a increase the surplus. Suppose 100 is earnings, uh, this uh, working expenses is 80 rupees, that means earnings is the surplus is 20 rupees. Suppose instead of 80 rupees, if it is 70 rupees, then surplus is increased from 20 to 30 years. 100 minus gross working expenses is equal to nothing but surplus or net revenue. So in that case, it is in the profit. Suppose if gross working expenses is more than gross earnings, then it is an organization is in the loss. So operating ratio, it should be as low as possible, less than 100%. If it is more than 100%, it is nothing but it is a losses. This is the simple formula. Operating ratio is equal to gross working expenses or total working expenses divided by gross earnings multiplied by 100. Simple gross working expense 
divided by gross earnings multiplied by 100. See, all our any ratio it should be multiplied by 100 to get the our ratio. Then immediately, what is the required thing is what is gross working expenses? How to calculate gross working expenses? So, gross working expenses formula is equal to ordinary working expenses plus appropriation to DR up in the current year plus appropriation to pension fund in the current year. That is called gross working expense or total working expense. Ordinary working expenses plus appropriation to DRF plus appropriation to pension fund. Now what is ordinary working expenses? Ordinary working expenses is equal to S12 demands 3 to 13. S12 demands 3 to 13 is called ordinary working expenses. And appropriation to DRF and appropriation to pension fund both are covered under demand number 14. And these figures also required to calculate gross working expense. Now we we'll come to the denominator. Uh, denominator that is a gross earnings. What is formula of gross earnings? Gross earnings very very simple. X plus Y plus Z. What is X? X means coaching earnings. Y means goods earnings. Z means sand earnings. But here we should note that earnings we should take for the calculation of this operating ratio is always apportioned earnings because earnings there are two kinds of earnings one is originating earnings and another is apportioned earnings but originating earnings only you should take for calculation of PI performance efficiency index not for operating ratio for operating ratio we always consider this apportioned earnings only huh? Because this operating ratio is nothing but it is a test paying or complying the commercial accounts. Complying the commercial accounts. Now check. This is the glossary of terms para 308 of the finance code value work. What is code book is saying about the operating ratio? We'll check. Already I shared this uh, table that uh, model uh, operating ratio table in the uh, chart box. Please download and uh, all of uh, I request all of you to take one notebook and pen because of the end of this uh, theory part, uh, we'll discuss some practical examples. Okay. Here if you check this table, this red color entirely indicated this commercial accounts. Whereas this blue color it is the suspense that is nothing but linkage. Linkage connecting commercial accounts and government accounts. And this black color is indicates government accounts. So this is the operating ratio table. So in the operating ratio, first we will start with the commercial accounts. First we will start with the commercial accounts. Now we will check what are the credits or receipts or earnings in our rivals. If you please check, hope I think this is uh, one. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah, please check. This coaching endings, the first item is coaching endings, less refunds. Second item is goods endings, less refunds. If you club the coaching earnings and goods earnings, it is called profit earnings, that is 1 plus 2. And fourth item is the sundry other earnings, that means other than profit earnings. If you club all 1, 2, 4, it is called gross earnings, that means it is not actual earnings, it is accrued earnings from the commercial point of view. So here, whether uh, realized in this year or next year, it is immaterial. Whatever earnings are accrued hmm, in the current year is called gross earnings. Now we we'll check the this debit side. What are the items? Here, debit side or outgoing side, it is a ordinary working expenses. That is expenses booked under final ads excluding appropriation to DRF and pension fund. 
Why final admission here? The suspense because you should not take whether it is a DPR in there. Ordinary working expenses, expenses booked under final heads, excluding appropriation to DRF fund pension fund. You should not take into DRF fund pension fund. And the second uh, row is appropriation to DRF. And the third one is the appropriation to pension fund. If together all uh, clubbed this ordinary working expense plus DRF plus pension fund, it is the gross working expense or total working expenses. This is the operating ratio. The basic information is required. Please remember X plus Y plus Z is required. That is gross earnings. Here, OWE and appropriation to DRF and appropriation to pension fund is required. This is the gross working expenses. If you, the difference between gross earnings and the gross working expenses is called net earnings. This is called net earnings. Sometimes in the examination, they may ask what is the uh, uh, net earnings, find the net earnings from the given figures. Or if it is an operating ratio, it is a very simple gross working expenses, that is the 13th item, divided by gross earnings, multiplied by 100. So we'll discuss with the examples of these practical figures. Then, the once commercial accounts are over, then linkets. How many linkets we have? Total four linkets we have. That is traffic and demand recoverable linkets operated on the NX side. And demands payable linked is operated on the expenditure side. And the fourth linked that is a labor suspense, it is operated in the WMS side, not that means capital side. This entire operating ratio is the revenue account. It is the revenue account, like income and expenditure account of the non-profit organization. Not here, there is no, not reflecting this assets or liabilities or capital or anything here. So that uh, linked the labor suspense is operated under capital of uh, demand number 16, that is a WMS. So here only three linkages, profit, demands recoverable on ending side, demands payable, three suspense. Here, if you plus this uh, uh, suspense to gross earnings, then it is called gross receipts. That means five plus six. What is five? Gross earnings. What is six? Suspense. It is gross receipts. See the word, please uh, note down. Earnings means commercial, receipts means government. If we check uh, the government accounts, it is the gross receipts, miscellaneous receipts, total revenue receipts. So every time here, earnings. Earnings, 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 earnings. Here, gross receipts, miscellaneous receipts, and total revenue receipts. That means now we are coming to government accounts after uh, adding this suspense. So, what are the gross receipts? Nothing but uh, gross earnings plus suspense is called gross receipts. Then we will add miscellaneous receipts. Miscellaneous assessment it is outside the scope of journal railways. The examples is guarantee recoverable from the state governments or miscellaneous receipts that is the government share of surplus profits of the railway PSU organization that is RBNL rights, IRCOR, or IRCTC and the sale of land of subsidized companies and receipts from the surcharge and the passenger fares, etc. It is all together miscellaneous receipts. If we add gross receipts and miscellaneous receipts, it is nothing but this is the final term, total revenue receipts. This is the final one on credits. Now we we'll check the expenditure side. Here already uh, we discussed this ordinary working expense plus DRF plus pension fund is called total working expense or gross working expense. If we add suspense, 
Here, suspense is where uh, demand table is operated on the expenses side. So, if you add suspense to total working expense, it is called gross expenditure. Please remember, now we are entering the government accounts. Expenditure, gross expenditure, miscellaneous expenditure, and total revenue expenditure. This is a revenue account, not capital account. If we check this commercial accounts, please check. Instead of expenditure, it is the expenses. Expenses, the word used expenses. So if you add suspense to gross working expense, it is a gross expenditure. Like in similar, how this miscellaneous receipts are added to gross receipts, we are added miscellaneous expenditure to the gross expenditure. Now we'll check what are the examples of miscellaneous expenditure. It is the survey expenditure that is the demand number two. Land for subsidizing companies and uh, subsidies plus other miscellaneous railway expenditure that is called appropriation to pension fund relating to railway board and miscellaneous establishment booked under grant number one and two that is demand number one and two. What is demand number one? Railway board. Demand number two is the miscellaneous expenditure. Miscellaneous expenditure that is all centralized revenue stores. RDSO, survey expenditure, all it is comes under miscellaneous expenditure. Now this is not the accident compensation fund and the OLWR, it is no more. And payments to work line, that is also almost negative. So if we add gross expenditure and miscellaneous expenditure, it is called total revenue expenditure. So total revenue receipts minus total revenue expenditure is called net receipts or net revenue. We call it as net receipts or net revenue also it is called. Yeah, any doubts, please understand in this uh, operating ratio table, please uh, uh, tell me otherwise I'll move to next topic, uh, practicals and other uh, this one. Please understand this table. If you understand this table, you will be able to calculate this operating ratio. It is. Yeah, please tell me, uh, Espita Gupta. Please tell me. Yeah, please tell me. Sir, actual expenditure, kya hota hai? Actual expenditure means, sir. Uh, Suppose that is uh, not for uh, in a uh, portal because uh, in sometimes uh, the exams they use the word actual expenditure. So actual expenditure we can uh, take ordinary working expenses plus DP is equal to actual expenditure. Okay. Actual ordinary working expenses plus suspense is equal. Yeah, please tell me, sir, Sinji. Sir, plan a capital expenditure, a capital chip, why taking a miscellaneous receipt to sell a plan? Take a miscellaneous receipt, miscellaneous receipt column, why take a sell of land receipt? Yeah, please. Uh, 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 miscellaneous receipt. Miscellaneous receipt column. Why take sale of land? Well, what is the column number? Miscellaneous receipt. Miscellaneous receipt. Miscellaneous uh, receipt, sir. Yeah. Uh, the examples is guarantees recoverable from state governments. Yes. And uh, uh, this RRB examination fees is there, no? Yes. Uh, and is collecting the examination fees from the students. Sir. Hmm? Appearing this uh, exams that is also comes under this receipts and uh, rights and uh, RBNL, these organizations are uh, declared profits. So, our railway has a stake, our railway has a shares in that railway uh, public sector undertakings. So, whatever dividends declared by uh, other this railway PSUs, that is also treated as miscellaneous receipts. 
and suppose we purchase the land for the subsidized company so that is also sale of amount also it is created to miscellaneous business and surcharge on the passenger fares surcharge on the passenger fares it is not in the earnings it is uh, included in the miscellaneous receipts four linked yeah mr hospital group the four linked the commercial and government accounts but you say only three yeah very good yeah the four, what is the fourth linked please tell me anyone traffic four. demand payable demand payable labor yeah labor suspense it is operated on the demand number 16 that is wms side here i already told you na this operating ratio is entirely revenue expenses revenue income it is the revenue account If we check, uh, see how many demands we have. Revenue demands. Three to fourteen. Three to fourteen. Three to fourteen. Three to three to fourteen. Eleven. No, no, no. One to fifteen. One to fifteen are called revenue demands. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Please check. Uh, uh, let's play. Demand number one to fifteen are called revenue demands. Demand number sixteen is the capital. Now please check. Demand number one and two is comes under miscellaneous expenditure. Demand number one and two is comes under miscellaneous expenditure. Demand number three to thirteen it is comes under ordinary working expenses. And demand number fourteen is the DRF and the pension fund. And demand number fifteen is the dividends payable. Demand number fifteen is dividends payable, but here dividends payable it is in nil from two thousand seventeen. So all demand number one to fourteen comes under it here. Here is there any room for this demand number sixteen? No, there is no room for this capital expenditure in the operating ratio table. Okay, uh, the first part it is the commercial accounts. Here we use the word earnings and the expenses. Here we'll adjust this linkage. What are the linkages? Profit and demand circulable on the suspense side. Here, I'll write clearly. Yes. Demands recoverable. Here, what is the suspense uh, expenses side? Demand, demand payable. Yes. So three linkages is comes. And here plus uh, suspe uh, M A R also we are taking M A R. Okay, though it is not linked, we are taking M A R also. And the fourth linked it is operated on the expenditure side, so that is capital expenditure side that is uh, not taken into the list. So if it is a red color, it denotes commercial accounts. If we add suspend, just please remember add, not direct. Add suspense always add. Remember for the operating ratio problems, we have to add suspense, add suspense, add suspense. If we add suspense, it is a gross receipts and gross expenditure. If we add miscellaneous receipts and miscellaneous expenditure, it is a total revenue receipts and total revenue expenditure. The result is net revenue or net receipts. Net receipts are net revenue. Now we'll check to what is the current year. Uh, uh, are you able to see this uh, latest budget estimates? This is 2022-23 commencing from April first, 2022. Please check. Uh, here also I calculated this operating ratio. What is coaching and next? Yeah, if you have calculator, please uh, calculate sixty-four thousand five hundred crores. What is goods and next? So only sixty-five thousand crores. I am extracted these figures from the budget document. Yeah, and salary and next it is the ten thousand crores. The total gross and next is one plus two plus three. What is the amount? Two lakhs thirty-nine thousand five hundred crores. If we check the share of coaching earnings, it is the twenty-seven percent. Share of goods earnings, it is the sixty-nine or seventy. And sundry earnings share is the four percent. But the value of target for sundry earnings share is the ten percent. 
That means still we are lagging behind with this our target of 10 percent. That is the see in the worldwide the NFR non-fair revenue or Sunday evening share it is the 20 percent, 20 percent of total earnings. But in our Indian railways, it is a very meager 4 percent. Now we we'll check this ordinary working expenses. Here ordinary working expenses, this is 1,70,264.49 crores. Appropriation to pension fund, 60,000 crores. And appropriation to DRF, it is a very nominal amount we have provided. That is 2,000 crores. That means uh, total 2,32,264.49. Now please tell me what is the operating ratio formula? Total working expenses divided by total uh, earnings into 100. Yeah, please calculate the uh, uh, operating ratio for this 2022-23. Uh, and message me in the chat box. Yeah, decimals close to uh, two, two decimals. Yeah, very good. Good, good. Yeah, HP is correct. Pawan Kriya is correct. Mukesh correct. Diana is correct. Manish correct. Yeah, Girija, please add up to decimal, two decimals. Yeah, Diana, it is 98 pulse wrong. Uh, SKNI correct, Jahid is correct, Jailashmi correct, Suryansh, Vibha, Yamrasiji, yeah, please check. What is the formula? Gross working expenses divided by gross earnings into 100. Simple. If you have calculator, it is very easy. Without calculator, it is difficult. Sanjay Kumar, Ganesh, yeah. Espita Gupta, it is wrong. Please check. Redmi right, Sonali right, Pawan right, Ajit right, uh, Singh right, Prabhakar right, Esil Shah. Yeah, please stop. Yeah, please stop. The correct answer is 96.98%. We have to rounding up. So the generally operating ratio will show up to the two decimals. 96.98. Yeah, please stop the chart box. Please stop. Please. Yeah, here please check. This is the railroad uh, directorate uh, expected. What is the suspense in the uh, expanded uh, earnings side? Please tell me what is the suspense? 100. 100, okay. What is the suspense here? I am taking. This is demands recoverable and profit. Okay. Yeah, please check. Here it is 100 is plus figure. Mm. That means we have to just add. 100 is the plus figure. So we have to just add. So what is the, if we add 100, 2 lakhs, 39,600. So here miscellaneous this is the projected 400 crores. So what is the total revenue receipts? 2 lakhs, 40,000 crores. Understand? 2 lakhs, 40,000 crores is the total revenue receipts or total receipts. Now we check this uh, expenses side. Please check uh, what is ordinary work. See here the word expenses. Here is the word used expenses, expenses. That is commercial accounts. So here 2 lakhs 32,264.49 crores is the total working expense. What is suspense here? We have taken minus figure. Minus means just minus. Plus means just add. Simple rule. In calculation of operating ratio, it is very simple rule. If the suspense is given plus figure, you just add. If suspense is given minus figure, you just subtract. Now here, please check. Now government accounts, the word used expenditure, expenditure, expenditure. That is the difference. In the here, expenses, commercial accounts. So what is the 2 lakhs 32, 264.49 minus 264.49, what is the net amount? 
two lakhs thirty two thousand crores is the gross expenditure. What is miscellaneous expenditure? Or tell me examples of miscellaneous expenditure in railways. Just now we discussed what are the miscellaneous expenditure examples. Yeah, you can message in the chat box. Yeah, please message in the chat box. Yeah, very good service. Pension of the railway board, not pension of all employees. Very good. Yeah, demand number one and two. Very good. Yeah, very. Good. Yeah, demand number one and two, nothing but it is a yeah survey CTIs accident compensation. Now it is no more ACSP. So this miscellaneous expenditure is two thousand six forty, and total expenditure is two lakhs thirty four six forty. Yeah, please uh, please stop the chat now. Please tell me what is net revenue? What is net revenue? Please find out. Net revenue or net receipts? Please find out. Yeah, please message in the chat box. Yes, very good. Yeah, it is not minus figure. It is a plus figure. Yeah, give up, please. Yeah, now I correct. Nay, correct. Ah, uh, both correct. Singh is correct. Ganesh correct. Manish correct. Sir Shah, yeah. Very good. The all are correct. Please stop. This is the very simple. That means, what is net receipts? Total receipts minus total expenditure is net receipts. Also, we call it as uh, net revenue. Previously, when you deduct the dividends from net receipts, it is called surplus. Now, dividend is no more. See here, the please check. Yeah, please stop the chat box. Please stop. Please stop. Yeah, operating expense is the total working expense divided by gross earnings into hundred. That is a ninety-six point nine eight percent. What is net revenue? Total receipts minus total expenditure. That is five thousand three sixty crores. This net revenue are also called as surplus. It is uh, appropriated to different funds. Already we are appropriated DR fund, pension fund, and the leftover funds are development fund. We are given thousand crores, capital fund two thousand three sixty crores, RR estate two thousand crores. The total amount is net revenue is five thousand six hundred five thousand three hundred sixty crores. Tally. Okay. So here uh, there is no chance for this uh, RSF. Railway safety fund and debt service fund. These are also funds, but no funds for appropriate. To. Here, you please check. This is the simplified operating ratio table. This is the simplified operating ratio table. Please check. Any doubts? Please ask me. Here, I have clubbed. I have taken uh, one uh, row. It is gross earnings. I have taken gross working expense. See, I have taken very small figures. That is two hundred one sixty. Then what is the operating ratio? Please tell me. Please message in the operating ratio. This example. Very simple problem. Very good. Sing is correct. Pawan, Girija, Manish. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Please stop. Please stop. Yeah. Yes. Forty-two wrong. Forty-two wrong. Jahid is wrong answer. Yeah, Amit, please no fractions. It is a uh, wrong figure. SLC, it is uh, wrong. Yeah. So it is a one sixty divided by two hundred. One sixty divided by two hundred multiplied by hundred is equal. What is the ratio? Eighty percent. Then please check the suspense here has given plus figure. Plus five means we have to add two zero five. Here the suspense is minus ten. Minus ten means we have to deduct one fifty. Gross. This is the commercial. This is the link, and it is the government. Government means two hundred five plus miscellaneous receipts fifty. Total revenue receipts two twenty. 
Here gross expenditure is 160 minus 10, 150. Miscellaneous expenditure is 25. And total revenue expenditure is 170. Please remember all the figures only plus except the suspense. Suspense may sometimes plus figure or minus figure depend on the accruals and the recoveries of the suspense. Okay. So the suspense figure only either it should be plus or minus. All other figures are plus only. Now please uh, message me in the chat box what is a net receipts. Please message in the chat box what is a net receipts. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, it is not shortfall. It is a surplus. Shortfall means if the expenditure is more than a, a receipts, it is shortfall. So it is a surplus only. Yeah, very good. All are correct. Yeah, sing shop, please check. Yeah. Very good. Everyone is correct. Yeah. Simple. Don't uh, confuse. Now check. What is net earnings? You may ask what is net earnings also. Net earnings it is nothing but just the difference between gross earnings and gross working expenses. What is net earnings? 200 minus 160 is called 40. What is operating ratio? It is a gross working expenses divided by gross earnings into 100, 80 percent. What is net receipts? This is a 220 minus 175. That is 45 rupees. Here the net receipts minus dividend is equal to surplus. So the, the dividend payment is not required due to measure of budget. This 45 rupees is distributed to all various funds. That is the development fund, safety fund, debt service fund, RRSK, capital fund. Yeah, now can you do the practical? Yeah, please check. Uh, already I shared this uh, uh, table, OR table. Uh, please do this uh, practical. If you want, please note down this operating ratio table. Yeah, please note down this operating ratio table without figures and this should be taken as a base for calculating uh, this operating ratio problems or I will share another. Please uh, drop this table. Hope it is uh, visible to all of you. Yeah, please confirm in the chat box. Is it visible? Yes. Yeah, please draw in your notebook. We'll uh, discuss some practical problems. I have uh, three or four practical problems is there. We we'll discuss all sorts of uh, the Yeah, can I close the uh, table or uh, please uh, tell me, yeah, I already shared in the chat box, again I will share.
I'm sharing this uh, OR table. Please, please download. Uh, please download. Now I'll show the problem. Yeah, is it uh, visible? Please confirm. Confirm in the chat box. Yeah, very good. Yeah, please do problem. Calculating the operating ratio and surplus or shortfall. Surplus means it is a nothing but a net uh, revenue or net basis from the given figures. Very easy. easy. Yeah, please message in the chat box. I'll check the answers. Very good. All are very. Yeah, Sisha 83K, right? Yeah, uh, very good. Uh, it is a, yeah. Uh, Prashant, right answer. Shah, right answer. Arjit, right, right. Vijud, right. Ganesh, right. Jayalashmi, right. Yeah, Ganesh, right. Pawan, right. Jah uh, Jahid is right. 
Yeah, Infinix is right. Manish, right answer. Rukesh, right. Simsha, wrong answer. Please check Simsha. It is wrong. Yeah, Jahid, right. Simsha, it is a wrong answer. Please check. Net revenue is wrong. Yeah, Sonali, please check. Uh, both answers wrong. Sonali. Yeah, Manish is right. Gudan right. Satish right. Suryansh right. It's not net profit. Espita Gupta, it's not net profit. Because uh, we are government organization, we call it as surplus or net resist. Only commercial organizations it is calling as net profit. Yeah, answers are correct. Jahid Patia right. Vibhaji, the wrong answer. Please check. Both wrong. Guda, right. SK Naik, right. Arjit Rai, right. Yeah, Bihari, right. Yeah, Singh, operating ratio is right. Net revenue is wrong. Please check. Yeah, uh, Arjit Kumar, right. Girija, right. Pawan, right. Sonali, please check. It is a wrong answer. Amar, right. Girija, right. Bihari, right. HP, right. Redmi, right. Tejas, right. Sonali, right. Sanjay Kumar, right. Prabhakar, right. Okay. Yeah, can I show the answer? Yeah, Viva, again, a wrong answer. Yeah. Can I show the answers? Janaki, wrong answer. Yeah, Singsha, shortfall is wrong. Yeah. Uh, please check the correct answers. Yeah, please stop the chat box. So this is 90% is the operating ratio. See here, gross earnings is 300 plus 600 plus 100, that is 1000. Suspense is plus 25, that means it is the, what is called 1025. 1025 is the gross, uh, uh, this, uh, gross earnings is 1000, gross expenditure working expenses is 900, simple. That is 90%, very, very simple. So here, plus 25, this is 1025, miscellaneous, this is 75, total 1100. Here, 900 minus 10, 890, plus miscellaneous expenditure, 110, the total revenue expenditure is 1000. So what is the surplus or what is the net receipts or what is the net revenue, it is 100. This is the answer. Yeah, please stop the chat box. Please stop the chat box. Now we'll check that. Another question, please check. Yeah, please do. This is second problem. Please do. Here I am not given a this is earnings and gross working expenses. So now you find with the help of table, you find gross earnings and gross working expense and calculate the operating ratio as well as the net receipts or net surplus or shortfall. Please start.
I hope it is visible to all of you. If not uh, visible, please message in the chat box. This is a little difficult because with the help of table, you have to find the gross working expense and gross earnings and find the operating ratio. Yeah, Harendra, wrong answer. I'll check the answers. Uh, yes, Jayalishmi is correct answer. Yeah. Singsha is correct. Viva is correct. Vijit is correct. Pawan Kumar is correct. Ganesh correct. Yeah, Arjit Rai, please check that uh, your answer is incorrect. Amar is correct. Yeah, HP, that's operating ratio is correct. The surplus is wrong. Please check. Yeah, Ravish is correct. Girija, operating ratio is wrong. Mukesh, right. Yeah, RB8365, it is old, not orderly. It is operating ratio. Sonali is correct. Tejas is correct. Infinix is wrong answer. Singh is right. Nayak, right. SL Shah, wrong answer. Satish, right. Bihari, right. Gudan, right. Sonali, right. Pavantilia, right. Ajit K. Kumar, right. Provoker, wrong answer. Arjit Rai, Rai, wrong. Yeah, Prashant, Shakpal is wrong answer. Bihari, wrong answer. Prashant, wrong. RB865, right. Girija, wrong answer. Yeah, one double LD. Please rename your uh, user IDs. It is difficult. Please rename with your name. Espita Gupta. Yeah, war is correct, but surplus is wrong. Please check. Prashant Sharpal is wrong. Infinix wrong. Yeah, Redmi is right. Can I show the answer? Yes, please wait. Yeah, I'll show. Yeah, I can see. Please, I'll show the answer also here. Yeah, please see. Here both are uh, at a time. Now please check. Simple. Here gross receipts is, uh, hope it is visible to all of you. Yeah. Gross receipts is 210. Please post it the table 210. Now what is suspense on earning side? Plus 10. Less than means if you go from receipts to earnings, the sign will change. The sign will change. Now the plus 10 becomes minus 10. So 210 minus 10 is equal to 200. So that means gross earnings is the 200. So see from earnings to receipts, we have to use same sign. 
plus or minus. But if you go back from this is to n means to find n means, you have to change the sign. Here suspense on n means is the plus one. Now it is minus 210 minus 10, 200. Here, a gross, uh, here what is the question answer given? Gross expenditure is given in the problem. That is 150. What is suspense? Minus 10. That means minus becomes plus. So 150 plus 10 is equal to 160. So 160 divided by 200, very simple, 80% is correct. 80% is correct. And if we add this 210 plus net receipts, it is a 220. Here 150 plus 75, 225. That means our expenditure is more than receipts. That means it is a shortfall that is minus Shortfall is minus five. Yeah, can you do one more problem? <coughs> yeah, can I give examination no problem? Can I give this uh, 2000 yes, appendix 3 examination questions? Yes. Okay. Yeah, before that, uh, we will discuss some more theory part also. Please wait. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pawan. Uh, all of you request, uh, please make a table in the examination also. It is very easy to solve the operating ratio problem. Yeah, it is as per code only, it is uh, the table we have prepared. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, now we'll check uh, some theory part. Yeah, is there any ideal operating ratio means for Indian Railways, there is no such ideal operating ratio or standard operating ratio. But in uh, worldwide, in the uh, railway sector, the operating ratio 80% or lower than 80% is the desirable or ideal. So what is the advantage of it is the lower operating ratio. So if it is the operating ratio low means we have more surplus. We have funds are available for this demand number 16. So that we can provide, we can appropriate to meet the plan expenditure that is the demand number 16 that is what is called safety fund or development fund or this uh, acquisition of rolling stock or construction of new lines that is through capital fund all these it is the advantage having a low operating ratio or more surplus here the important landmark here uh, as far as this operating uh, Landmark as far as operating ratio is the 2005. Why? Because the prior to 2005, the lease charges, whatever we are paying to IRFC, it is entire lease charges is accounted under demand number 9. That means it is a part of ordinary working expenses. So normally in the lease charges, it is a two components is there. One is principal or capital component. Another is the interest component. Interest component is another one. So normally only interest or component only, it is to be debited to demand number nine. But what happened prior to 2005, the including this capital component also, 
it is uh, debited to divide number nine. Thereby, it was uh, operating ratio is as high as possible prior to 2005. So after 2005 years, for well, the audit has objected for treatment of this lease charges. Then we are uh, uh, created one new planet that is a 2200 to accommodate this capital component of the lease charges. So from 2005 year onwards, there was a uh, reduction in the uh, working expenses that is under demand number nine because now we are only interest component is charged. Okay, so this is the important and uh, generally the question is likely asking is what are the measures to be taken to achieve the lower or efficient operating ratio. So the answer is either we have to maximize the profit earnings. That is nothing but the rationalization of the fair and price tariffs, effective marketing strategies to capture more and more profit. Nowadays, the railway board has initiated several uh, measures, several initiatives to capture the uh, more and more profit from uh, especially price side. And the creation of additional capacity, that means the construction of new lines, Profit facilities, doubling, gas conversion, thereby we can run more trains, we can earn more re uh, revenue. And the optimum utilization of the existing rail infrastructure and generating more non fair revenue. What is the target in uh, other countries? The share of non fair revenue it is almost 20%. Whereas if we check the next year estimates, it is only 4%, very negligible. So we have to generate more non-fair revenue other than coaching and uh, earnings, goods and control over expenditure that is the economy and austerity measures and improved manpower planning because uh, uh, if you check this stop cost almost it is more than 50% of the total working expense. So by rationalizing, by reducing this uh, manpower, we can achieve more operating ratio. Efficient up. and inventory management that is nothing but turnover ratio as should as uh, less and SFC and SEC that is optimizing the fuel consumption because the demand number 10 that is a fuel demand almost to uh, occupies 20 to 25 percent of total working expenses in Indian trains. That means if you controlled by uh, this uh, demand number 10 budget will uh, save a lot. Okay. These are the measures for this. This is the best ever operating ratio in Indian railways was 74.7 percent in the 1963-64. 74.7 percent in the 1963-64. If you check last few years, see almost to, uh, eight to nine years back it is a 90, 91 percent. Now it is almost to 98.99. However, we are uh, expecting next year, that is the target is 96.98 percent. Just now we discussed it. However, in the current year, the budgeted was 98.515 percent, but in the REB stage, it was revised to 98.9. Because of this COVID 2020-21 also, uh, uh, because the government has given a special grant uh, to meet the pension liabilities. Otherwise, our operating ratio would be almost to 150 percent. Just because, uh, because the government has uh, given a special uh, loan to this uh, pension fund. So, the operation ratio is actually 97.45 percent. Okay. So, the current year it is a 98.93. Now uh, it is a reversible one and next year it is a 96.98 percent. The best ever thing is 74.7 in the 1963-64. This is a uh, 2020-21. Uh, okay, already uh, we have covered this. Uh, this is the highest and the, uh, lowest operating ratio of the journal railways 2020-21.
this is the what is highest operating ratio and lowest operating ratio as per 2020-21. If you check the metro railway, it is the highest operating ratio, 250 percent. That means for metro railway, 100 rupees is earnings. The working expenses is 250 rupees. That is two and a half times more than earnings. Second highest is the Eastern Railway Kolkata, that is a 171%. Please check if anyone from the Eastern Railway, please check your financial figures for the latest year. And lowest, it is the East Coast Railway, 50.9%. The second lowest is the Southeast Central Railway, Blasco, 72.5%. Yeah, usually this question also is asking in the rail, uh, examination. Comparison of operating ratio of Indian railways with the other countries is not possible because due to different methodology of calculation of this operating ratio yeah, and thereby reducing the validity of the comparison of such statistical figures. But comparing of operating ratio of different journal railways in Indian railway also it is not possible because uh, each journal railway has a separate uh, distinctive features that is a uh, floods, accidents, some mining uh, facilities, hmm? uh, resources, mine is uh, geological resources. But uh, it is better to compare operating ratio of particular journal railway that is a South Central Railway from year to year, year over year basis. That means the South Central Railway you can compare the previous year operating ratio with current year and the current year with the next year estimate. Now we check is operating ratio is the best financial ratio to show the performance of railways. If the answer is no, what is the reason and which one is the alternate one? Yeah, it is correct. The operating ratio itself is not a perfect indicator for the judging the efficiency of the Indian railways. It is only one of the indicator, but it is not a sole indicator. So in addition to this operating ratio, we will take this rate of return or ROC. That is very, very important. ROC means return on capital employed or ROR means rate of return. Now I have taken a one hypothetical uh, illustration, please check. This uh, railway A is the 1000 capital, gross earnings is 200, gross working expenses is 150, then operating ratio it is simple 150 divided by 200 into 100, it is 75 percent. But if you check this rate of return, that means what is the profit year? Year profit or surplus is 50 rupees. Year surplus. Surplus is 50 rupees on the capital 1000. Now we can call it as a commercial angle, it is profit. So 50 rupees is profit in commercial terms. It is earned on the capital invested is 1000 rupees. So what is the rate of return or ROC? It is a 5%. Now we check the B railway. B railway capital is 1000 rupees, 5000 rupees, whereas earnings is 2000, working expenses is 1600. So operating ratio very simple, 1600 divided by 2000 multiplied by 100, it is 80 percent. That means if we compare this operating ratio, the A journal railway is a efficient than B because A journal railway is a less operating ratio. Very few working expenses compared to earnings. So if you judge only OR, if you take OR, this A railway is efficient. But uh, if you take this ROR, here what is profit? 400 rupees. What is the capital? 5,000. That means here the rate of return is 8%. So if we check this ROR or ROC, this B railway is efficient than A. Okay. That is the advantage. So to sum up, the combination of above two ratios will be considered to evaluate the performance of railways instead of operating ratio alone. So this operating ratio is helpful for comparing the railway efficiency of year over year as well as evaluating inter-journal comparison among different journal railways in the unit. Now we'll check what is performance index. 
This is very important from the examination point of view. See, the operating ratio is for zonal railways as well as Indian railways. Whereas for divisions to calculate their efficiency, that is called PEI indicator. PEI. That means it is the PEI is the performance efficiency index is a performance indicator in the divisions like OR for zonal railways. As of today, the OR is not being calculated for divisions. Why? Because the divisions are not uh, treated as the profit center. Only divisions we are treated as the cost center. That is the reason. The alternating endings are not appropriate uh, apportioned among the divisions. It is centralized. If we check, uh, the traffic accounts office is uh, working at the headquarters level, not in the divisions. Why? Because the divisions are called as cost centers, not profit center. But to evaluate the performance of the division, we have to calculate this PA. Here PEI is formula is demands 3 to 12 or 3 to 13. In some railways it is 3 to 13 and some railways it is not taking. But the difference is very negligible. Okay. And divided by originating endings. But in the operating ratio we are taking apportioned endings. But in the PEI it is the originating endings multiplied by 100. Okay. That means uh, this uh, appropriation to DRF and pension fund will not be considered. At the same time, apportion and insult is not possible. Here, check uh, the differences between operating ratio and PEA. The operating ratio is uh, demand number 3 to 13 is considered, whereas PEA only demand number 3 to 12. Here, in the operating ratio, apportion and is the important. Whereas for PA, it is the originating endings. In the operating ratio, we are considered appropriation to DRF fund pension fund. Whereas in the PA, we should not take the appropriation to DRF fund pension fund. The operating ratio is calculated for zonal railways as well as Indian railways. And Indian railways as a board. Whereas it is PA is calculated for divisions. The formula is gross working expense divided by gross earnings multiplied by 100. Whereas formula here, the demands 3 to 12 divided by originating earnings multiplied by 100. Because zonal railways are treated as profit center, the divisions are treated as cost center. Now we'll check the earnings plus revenue. This is the latest development. In Indian Railways, we normally use the word earnings always from the beginning of the this railways. But the actual uh, uh, word we have to use is uh, correct word is the revenue, not earnings. Because uh, what is the meaning of uh, this uh, earnings means? Uh, Earnings is nothing but the surplus. That is a revenue minus expenditure is equal to earnings. But here we called, we use the earnings in place of the sales figure or revenue figure. That is incorrect. Earnings means it is the, what we are arrived in net receipts or net revenue or surplus, that is earnings in the commercial parlance. But that's why our railway minister has suggested using the word, the revenue instead of earnings. The difference between revenue and earnings is revenue is nothing but what is the sales amount, total amount of money made in the sales. Earnings is nothing but the portion of revenue the company keeps in profit after every expense is paid. That is a net basis or net revenue. So using the word earnings so far in lieu of revenue is incorrect one because earnings means profit or surplus so that is a we can uh, call here after abstract x is the coaching revenue abstract y is the goods revenue abstract z is the sunday revenue it is high time to modify the revised accounting classification in the parents score value to accordingly these are the key takeaways for the uh, this objective type questions 
War is calculated for Indian railways and zonal railways, whereas PI for details. War formula is gross working expenses divided by gross earnings multiplied by PA formula is actual demands 3 to 12 divided by originating earnings into 100. What is the landmark year for the operating ratio? It is the 2005 because here the bifurcation of lease charges into capital and revenue component. War okay. it is a taking always apportioned earnings. PA is originating earnings. Highest operating ratio is the metro railway. In uh, some few years back, it is almost 450% and 500%. The operating ratio. That means for every 100 rupees earnings, the 500 rupees five times the expenses. Now it is reduced almost 250, 200 times. Still it is high. What is the commercial parallel? We use the earnings or revenue and expenses. In the government parallels, we have to use receipts and expenditures. What is the new name for earnings? It is the revenue. Yeah, please raise the hand. I will uh, uh, unmute. Yeah, if no queries, we will end up the session. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, any queries? Sir, we will not have the appendix three exam. Pardon? Sir, when will we appendix three exam multiple choice? Uh, that is a million dollar question. That is to be asked. Uh, decided by railway board, not by us. Hmm? Hope we will be conducted it is as, as soon as possible. Uh, I request all of you be ready with uh, the date of uh, notification for a new, a new exam. But some people went to CAT now, sir. Yeah, that is uh, their uh, issue. That is, anyway, it is resolved by the uh, railway board. But what about special exams, sir? Say, as per schedule, sir. Yeah, as of now, it is uh, March 14th to 24th. Yes, sir. But uh, please uh, check the updates uh, from the railway board regarding okay. because one case is filing a okay. okay. cat. That is uh, out of our uh, topic. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, no queries, please. Hope uh, no queries from the participants. Okay, then we'll wind up the show, wind up the session. On behalf of Piripam Sikandarabad, I thank Sri M. Nagishwar Rao for taking up the session on operating ratio and also uh, explain the MCQs. Tomorrow we have session at 11 o'clock on accounting reforms in the Indian Railways. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, we have a session, uh, session on accounting reforms in Indian Railways. I request you all to please join, log in by 11 o'clock. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you once again. One and all. Bye.